Hello friends, let us continue with part 2 in which we are going to study E1 mechanism. It is elimination first order. Just like SN1, this also follows <coughs> the similar pattern in which a cargo cation is obtained. Now let us see what we discussed in E2. There was a living group. I am rewriting E2 for your reference. Leaving group OH minus extracted a proton which forced the chlorine to go away. It was possible because it is feasible for breaking of CCL bond and formation of C double bond C. But what if this particular group itself is OH? Now, OH is not a very happy living group, it is a poor living group, it doesn't like to go away, and that is why the mechanism cannot proceed V2 if we have an alcohol and that is why a dehydration of alcohol proceeds through the formation of a mechanism which involves formation of a carbocation that is why it can happen in presence of an acid and not in presence of a base now look at the situation under any circumstances I am interested to get rid of this OH group. The OH group is not willing to go on its own because it is a poor living group. So what I am going to do, I am going to persuade this OH to become a better living group. To make it a better living group, I take use, I make use of an acid H+. What is the job of the H+, look at OH. Let me, for the sake of convenience, write OH here, it makes hardly any difference. Oxygen has got two lone pair of electrons. As H plus comes here, oxygen can form a bond with H plus and what it will do is, it will form an oxonium ion. A coordinate bond will be formed. And whenever a coordinate bond is formed, obviously that makes it oxygen positively charged. Oxygen is highly electronegative. It does not like a positive charge on it. By hook and crook, it will try to get rid of this positive charge and in doing so, it breaks up this bond, extracts both the electrons over here and results into a formation of a carbocation. This is step one, which is a slow step. And that is why in our usual technology, it is called as rate determining state or RBS. Once the carbocation is formed, the next job is very simple. The carbocation extracts the hydrogen from the adjacent group and it forms an alkene. So what we have here is some hydrogen H plus goes away the bond shifts over here and what you get is CH2 double bond CH2 so please see whatever H was taken up by oxygen in step 1 it was taken up by oxygen in step 1 the same H is going out in step 2 so the incoming H plus is becoming outgoing H plus that is why it can be called as an acid catalyzed even mechanism <coughs> it happens in presence of an acid. <coughs> Let me revise it one more time. The OH group, which is a bad living group, is converted into a better living group by making use of H plus, that is acid. Had this acid not been there, the mechanism wouldn't have been possible. So E2 is impossible in this case. It has to be E1, which proceeds through the formation of a carbocation. So that OH2 plus, which becomes a better living group, ultimately results into formation of the carbocation. Now let us see a more integrated example. Let us not take ethanol. Let us take isopropyl alcohol or propan 2 or As before, 
the H plus is going to be forming a bond with oxygen. It will protonate it and it will make it OH2 plus. OH2 plus will break up this bond. It will form a carbocation. And in the next step, the carbocation will extract either this hydrogen or this hydrogen. And what we will get is propene. Now let us consider what we will get if instead of propane 2 all, we use propane 1 all. As before, H plus will protonate this, will form OH2 plus. OH2 plus is not happy with a positive charge, it will cut this bond out and it will form a carbocation over here. After this, a very interesting thing happens, which happens almost every time and is asked in many, many competitive exams. This carbocation is a primary carbocation. If possible, this carbocation will somehow try to get rearranged into a secondary carbocation by a concept which is known as a hydride shift. So, due to hydride shift, this particular bond shifts here and a positive charge comes over here. So, in the rearrangement, you will get a secondary carbocation which is more stable than the primary carbocation. So after the rearrangement, again the same thing will happen. It will remove one of the hydrogens and what you will get is propane. So whether it is propane 1 all or whether it is propane 2 all, the alkene form will be propane because a primary carbocation will shift into a secondary carbocation and then it will kill it. So this particular example is just to make you aware of the shift of carbocation from primary to secondary. That's it. <coughs> now we will come to the last part and that is the E1 C B mechanism. Let us write down here the situations for E2 and E1. E2 has a good living group and it has a base. For E1, the living group is poor, but an acid that is H plus protonates it and it converts it into a good living group. So to convert a poor living group like OH into a good living group, we protonate it to make it OH2 plus. But now imagine a situation in which the living group is poor but we do not have an acid, we have a base. So now we do not have an acid which will convert a poor living group into a good living group. In that case, let us understand what will happen. Let us take an example of two fluorohexane. Why I have chosen fluoro is because it is the most electronegative element in the world and it is the poorest living group, it does not want to leave. It is the most strongly electronegative substance. So, let me take an example here. Whatever is here makes no difference. Now let us try to understand what is going to happen when we have a base here. When we have a base over here, it may extract hydrogen either from here or here. It hardly makes any difference in our understanding. The point is, if it extracts the hydrogen from here, this bond will shift here. But this fluorine will refuse to leave. It 
will not leave. It will refuse to leave because it is a very very poor living group. So E2 mechanism cannot work if the living group is poor. I let me repeat again, we do not have a proton which will protonate it. It is not possible because we have got base OH minus. So what exactly will happen in this situation? OH minus now wants to extract a proton. That part is possible, it can happen. But after extracting a proton, as the, let me do it here only. As it extracts a proton from here, it forms a carbon anion. The proton can be removed either from here or from here. If the proton is removed from here, a carbon ion will be formed in this position or in this position. Now look at the carbon ion, this one. This is a primary carbon ion and this is a secondary carbon ion. As you know that in case of carbon ion, primary is more stable than secondary. So the carbon ion formed in this case will be a primary carbon ion and not the secondary carbon ion. As the carbon ion is formed, now the next state is possible. Negative charge means basically there is a lone pair of electron. The activation energy and thermodynamic concentration allows now to shift this lone pair over here and now the fluorine will be forced to leave because there is a very strong presence of a lone pair which will enable the formation of a double bond and what you will get here is a double bond whatever is here on the other side I am not interested what did it be anything the double bond will be formed in between one and two so you will get hex 1e as a major product and hex 2e as a minor product around 65 percent and 35 percent had this been chlorine, bromine or iodine the situation would have been exactly ulta the mechanism would have been E2 and the yields also will be ulta hex 2 in would have been around 70 to 75% hex 1 in would have been around 30% so please understand that E1 CD mechanism will happen under two circumstances number one the living group is poor and it is accompanied by a base the mechanism that will happen will be E1CB. Let me quickly give you one more example of E1CB which is accompanied by formation of carb and iron. If you recall the aldol condensation which happens in presence of a base OH minus, the same thing happens. The OH minus first forms a carb and iron by extracting a hydrogen from the alpha position. The hydrogen is extracted by this and that is why you get a carb anion here. The formation of carb anion is favored because it gets stabilized by resonance. Similarly, you see the previous example in which there was a fluorine and a carb anion over here fluorine being a very good electron withdrawing group stabilizes the carbon ion please note that electron releasing groups will stabilize carbocation that is why a tertiary carbocation is more stable because alkyl groups are electron releasing just as electron releasing groups stabilize carbocation electron withdrawing groups will stabilize carbon anion and that is why in even CB when there was fluorine an excellent electron withdrawing group it stabilizes the carbon anion. Let us see the situation here now. As the carbon anion is formed, this carbon anion is going to act as a nucleophile on another aldehyde molecule. As this particular bond is polar, there is slightly positive charge on carbon and slightly negative charge on oxygen. CH2 minus will attack here, the bond will shift and what you will get is CH2H will come from here and O minus. In the next step, O minus will extract a hydrogen from the base, water sorry, and OH minus will go away. 
if you can see the OH minus which was incoming in the first state which removed a proton is outgoing in the last state and the product that you will get here 